A great welcome to UCC. We're so happy that you came here, even for the short visit that you've made. Um, you've been in Black Rock Castle Observatory, um, checking that out and mm. watching these rockets fly up yes, into the air. Spectacular. And um, here you are now in the second observatory that we have in Cork, the Crawford Observatory here, which is about 120 years old, but mm. um, and has many kind of the instruments here that were built by um, a famous Irish telescope maker, Howard Grubb. But that's the history, as important as it is. But let's move to today and yourself. What made you become an astronaut? Well, it was kind of easy for me to answer that question because when I was a little boy uh, was when the Apollo missions were going to the moon. So on TV, me and my family would be watching these um, brave men walk on the moon, and that certainly inspired me to want to be an astronaut. So uh, that's kind of where I started heading down the path was as a, as a young child. And, um, and today then, I mean, you had a message for the lads, the students that you've just met in there as far as their careers in science or engineering mm -hmm. um, is concerned. Would you like to kind of just elaborate that for us here? Yeah, and I, I try to tell all, uh, especially college age kids, which these are um, folks that maybe not really know what they want to do with their lives. And so I challenge them to do something that they're passionate about. Um, I don't care what it is, just find out what their passion is and then pursue that goal and they'll be amazed how, how they help uh, your country or how they help society in general with the things they can do. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And you know, we'd hope that many of the students here in UCC would have that passion and that they can kind of carry it forward into their careers afterwards, certainly. Um, but as far as you're concerned now, your career as an astronaut and many of your colleagues has come to an interesting juncture in history with the ending of the, the shuttle um, program. Mm -hmm. And we're in a kind of uncertain kind of hiatus now as far as the American manned program is concerned mm -hmm. in the near future. Where would you see it going in the short term? Where would you like to see it go in the long term? Yeah, we're in a, as you know, the shuttle ended in July. So what a, a trem tremendous 30 years of program that was in a great era. Um, we are kind of in a transition period. Um, we now rely on the Russians to get to space um, until we can build a new spacecraft ourselves. So we're hoping in the next three to five years, uh, a U.S. commercial company is going to build our next spacecraft. So we hope they're up and running and uh, all ready to go for human beings here in the next three to five years. Uh, and that's short term. Long term, NASA and the government are, are looking for a deep space vehicle. Um, and we're kind of designing that now. They just announced the booster for that. Uh, recently, so we're kind of heading down that path, but that's again maybe 10, 15 years down the road. And so, was it likely that in the longer term for the major interplanetary missions that NASA will still have the major role there in comparison to the other companies today that might you know, eventually make these smaller capsules for kind of suborbital? Right, um, that's, that's the way at least the plan is, and yes. uh, these private companies are their only mission right now at least is to get us back and forth to the International Space Station, which is only a couple hundred miles up in low Earth orbit. So the NASA piece, the government piece, is to get us to deep space to eventually, hopefully, Mars yes. and other planets. Fantastic. The other aspect of what NASA does, of course, of great interest to several people here in UCC, are the astronomical observatories, the wonderful astronomical observatories that NASA has built over the last few years. And whether it's the Hubble Space Telescope or the Chandra X-ray Observatory mm -hmm. or many of the other um, infrared and optical observatories up there as well. Um, have you any sense of where this is going in the next few years? There's hopefully the James Webb Space Telescope in maybe 10 years' time. Um, these are other kind of very exciting areas where NASA is going to contribute to our understanding of the universe on right. a very fundamental scale. Right. It's certainly frontiers that humans can't get to, as you're mentioning. It's just so far out there that these wonderful observatories are, are giving us a chance to see. So. Uh, I think all of us hope that, that the James Webb gives up there tomorrow. Absolutely. Even it's not, but you know, Absolutely. eventually it gets up there and does what it's supposed to do. The Hubble's still giving us great images. Wonderful images, it is and, indeed. And uh, we just, we certainly should not let that go. No, no, uh, no. So I, we all hope it's going to succeed and, and uh, continue. Very much so. Well, listen, Shane, a pity to cut it short, but thank you very much for your visit today. It was Thanks much appreciated, and we may even see you again um, in the not too distant future, hopefully. Okay. Hopefully so. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much.